Hey, before I start, I made a few actual real life enamel pins. Some of you might know these designs from my Instagram, but now you can buy them in a the form of a pin. They're huge and so sick. I love them. And if you order them now, you'll get a 50% discount if you use the code new plastic at checkout. Link in the description. Okay, now we can start. Hey, you guys from New Plastic and look, this is an educational channel, but I'm making content over here. Sometimes you just got to work with the hype to make friends with the algorithm. It's just business. So before this meme is gone for good, let's jump on the hype train and make these goofy ass big red boots. I'm sure you've seen them all over your feed. And if you didn't, well, now you're gonna. At the end of the day, this is like the easiest thing to make. And it's a good practice for all y'all who want to get better at box modeling. All right, check out the Gumroad store. All sorts of awesome packs there. Also consider supporting on Patreon and memberships where you'll get all these project files as well as other cool perks but mostly help you make more and better content for y'all follow me on instagram at ojang subscribe share comment bell and you know what take a break from the digital world and go build something in real life work with your hands you know all right let's go Okay, let's start with a cube here. I guess the boot size should be around 16 centimeter width, 45 length and 15 depth. Let's open up the four views. Make sure we click on the right view window, hit shift V and in the back tab, input a profile image of the boot, scale it down and adjust it roughly to match the size of the cube. Click on the front view window and upload a photo of a front view of the boot and also match it roughly to the size of the cube. The photo has some lens distortion, so we don't have to match it perfectly. It's more of a guide. Actually, the boot is a bit narrower, so let's switch to X and Z axis so it's slightly larger in depth. Adjust it again slightly. Okay, good enough. Press Z on the cube to make it editable. Press KL to add some loop cuts. And to do that, we need to go to polygon mode. Now let's add a loop cut here, then another one here and another one right under it. Let's select this polygon and control drag it on the Z axis. Add a few more loop cuts. Press UB for ring selection and select these two poly rings. Scale them on the X axis. Let's adjust these edges position and scale. Control drag these polygons on the Z axis. Move these edges too. Okay, we got a bunch of extra edges, so let's go to point mode, select all points and hit UO to delete all duplicate points. Uh, let's select these edges and hit MN to remove them. And the same here. Okay, cool. Let's put this in a subdivision surface so we can see it all rounded up nice. Looks okay so far. Let's keep adjusting the proportions while the subdivision is turned on so we can understand better how it's looking. Let's select this polygon and hit MW to extrude inside. Then control and drag it on the Y axis and do it a few more times till we get this inner tube. I won't create a full inside pocket cause you can't really see all the way inside. UB to select this poly ring, then MT to extrude it. KL to add a loop cut. Then select these loops and scale them a bit. Uh, no, this bottom loop needs to stay in place. So deselect it and scale these. Adjust these loops to fit this curve better. Now let's select this bottom loop and hit MS to bevel it just a little. This will create a sharper transition there. And just keep adjusting this whole section. Okay, not bad. Let's add another loop cut here to make it sharper as well. Adjust these a little bit. Okay, the bottom looks okay, but the back needs to be a bit pointier. So let's extrude these polygons and scale them down on the x-axis and adjust this whole thing to make it more curved. Okay, yeah, that's a bit better. Few more adjustments here nice and now let's select all the polys on the bottom hit mw to extrude inner or no let's undo and better yet let's drag them up a bit and then control drag them down to extrude them downward so we create this extra poly ring here now let's extrude inner just slightly and let's select this first loop and ms to bevel it and let's add one subdivision to the bevel so it adds an extra loop. 
Now let's select this extra loop and scale it down on all axes with the right click. And now we have this little flap for the sole. Now the sole has all these ridges and we can sculpt them in, but it will add so much details to the models and it's not a very important detail. So in this case, we'll just create those later using a displacement texture. Nice. Okay, we're pretty much done. I see this here needs to be adjusted slightly. Cool. Let's current state the object, the whole thing. Let's hide this object. And now we have a baked model that's still pretty low poly. Let's call it left boot. Make sure you're on poly mode. And down here, press on the iron icon and select the brush tool. Let's change the mode to relax. Bring down the size and crank strength to 100. Select all polygons and start brushing the curved areas. This effect is pretty subtle because the model structure is pretty good. What this is doing is slightly optimizing the way the polygons are distributed. If some polygons are too stretched or too condensed, it just kind of equalizes them without changing the topology and without affecting the volume of the model. Okay, cool. I want to adjust this area a bit more. So let's go back to the brush tool and should we select the pool mode? No, let's hit MI for the magnet tool. And on the right view window, start pulling this area to the right. Doing it in this window will make sure we're only pulling on the Z axis. And I'll just slightly adjust all this area here, which will kind of help make it a bit more organic and less perfectly linear. And now we'll go back to the brush tool, select the smooth mode, bring strength down to around 50, and very lightly brush this area to smooth this curve. You don't want to overdo it because this affects the volume. Okay, great. I think we're good. Let's go to the UV edit section. Click set UVs from projection. And you might want to click on this cog wheel and make sure it's set to frontal or shrink wrap so we don't get any edge breaks on the new projection. Now let's go to edge mode. Select this loop here at the bottom. Select this loop at the crease here. This loop on the inside. Mm, you know what? This whole section here looks too round to me. Let's go back to the main workplace and select the pinch sculpting brush and let's start brushing the inner side of this opening and you can see how it's slowly getting sharper now i'll just select this inner part and up here i'll click on the y button to lock the y axis and now if i click and drag outside of the object axis it'll only scale it on the z and x axis deselect this ring and again click and drag outside of the object axis do this a few more times and adjust the whole section gradually and yes, this is much, much better. Okay, back to UV edit. And again, let's select this crease loop, the bottom loop, this loop on the top of the inside and the bottom of the inside. Now let's make sure stop at selections is checked and shift click on this loop and this and this. Now let's hit the UV unwrap button and hit it again a few more times till the UV map is aligned nicely. And we got a beautiful UV map. Let's just move these islands a little bit to the left. And one thing you want to make sure is that no UV island is flipped. Sometimes it does that. So in the view menu, let's select filled polygons and everything is yellow. So we're good. Just so you can see, if I flip this island, it paints it blue. So if any island is blue for some reason, just flip it back and you're good. Okay, let's get rid of the old UV tag. Right click on the model, material tags and bake materials. Let's check UV map. And if we hit preview, you can see it shows us the UV islands. Let's change the depth to 16 bits because we're going to use it as a displacement map. The size to 4K, give it a name and location and hit bake. Nice. Let's open this in Photoshop. And we know that this, this whole island is our soul. And I'll just use the pen tool to draw this shape with a little buffer from the edges. This will be the section where the ridges go. And I can now draw all the ridges here, but I'll just copy this shape and paste it into Illustrator. Paint it white and just draw this slim black rectangle, duplicate it to the bottom, hit W for the blend tool and click on both rectangles to create this blend between them. I'll just make sure they're full black and double click on the blend tool and adjust the steps to make the ridges. This looks okay. I'll cut this soul shape and mask out the ridges with it and then draw this white rectangle where the logo goes. Okay, sick. Let's paste this back into Photoshop and I'll also paste in the new plastic logo just for kicks. One last thing, I'll add a very, very subtle inner glow to these shapes for a softer displacement transition. Copy the inner glow and paste it on the logo as well and adjust it so it's smaller. And finally add a white background. That's it. 
save this and back to cinema let's make this window in perspective mode so we can move around in it and i'll just adjust the light slightly i'll add a random indoor hdri and let's see the render okay you can pause and see my octane settings i'll just go to the camera imager and make sure the ocio is set to punchy agx if you want to learn more about agx check out my tutorial about it let's add a backdrop align the boot with the bottom Let's disable the light so we can adjust the HDRI. I want the HDRI to add a subtle light from the right. We can probably disable the angles on the Fong tag to make it all super smooth. And the light is a bit too strong, so let's bring it down to 30. Cool. Let's add a diffuse material and add it to the backdrop. And let's add a universal material and add it to the boot. Change BRDF mode to GGX or maybe to Beckman because it's a soft material, but it doesn't really matter that much. Make the diffuse color a dark red because I'll be adding subsurface scattering. Okay, bloom is way too strong. Let's tone it way down. All right, add an octane noise to the roughness channel. Add a gradient node and reduce the black and white contrast. Mm, maybe a bit brighter. Let's up the IOR, 1.48, too much, maybe 1.4. Let's duplicate this noise, plug it into the bump channel, reduce the omega for less details, scale it down, add a gradient node and make the white a dark gray. Okay, sweet. Now let's add a diffuse transmission, add a random walk medium, set the albedo to a bright red and the radius to a slightly more orange hue and oops i changed the wrong one so this to the radius and this one to the albedo okay sick hdri too strong let's tone it down and maybe rotate it back a bit so it's coming more as a rim light now let's take a look at the sole let's add a displacement node Change the height to 0.5, details to 4K, and mid-level to 1 because we want the blacks to push in and not the whites to push out. Add an image texture with the displacement map we made in Photoshop, and look at that. Let's change the type to float because it's a black and white map. We can also add an octane tag to the model and increase subdivisions to make it smoother. Nice, beautiful displacement. We can add a very subtle Gaussian blur to it, and maybe lower the height. We're getting very slight light artifacts on the edges. It's probably because the bottom is barely getting any light, but it's fine, I'm not worried about it. We can probably lower the IOR though. Awesome, look at this beautiful, subtle subsurface scattering we're getting, I love it. Okay, great. I think we can make the bump even more subtle. Cool, let's duplicate this model and we can just have these two models and be done with it, but Mm, I forgot to add a slight flat side to the inner side of the sole. Should have done it before I created the UV maps, but I think the change will be so subtle that it won't create any major distortions to the UV. So let's do it. I'll just stay in this view from the bottom and hit MI for the magnet tool and just start slightly dragging this part inside. And while we're at it, make the heel a bit more pointy. Okay, great. Looks much better. Let's duplicate this boot call it right boot. And there are several ways to mirror an object. I'll do it the old school way by changing the X scale to minus one, add a null object as a child, align it to the boot, merge them together, and adjust the Z rotation to zero and the X and Y scale to one. And only thing left to do is to select all polygons and reverse the normals. That's it, a perfectly flipped boot. The problem now is the logo is going to be flipped as well. So let's go to UV edit and you can see our islands are flipped since they're blue. So I'll go to poly mode, select all and mirror you. Now in Photoshop, I'll flip everything as well. No wait, not the logo. Flip these two layers and drag the logo to its place. Save this as a separate file. Back in Cinema, Main Workplace, let's name this material Left Boot, duplicate it, name it Right Boot, and change the displacement texture to the new file. And voila, the texture isn't flipped. I centered the logo a bit and reloaded the texture, 
But what I didn't see at the time was that the whole texture was not sitting centered in the sole. Uh, I'm going to fix that later. And I adjusted the roughness channel a bit on both materials. Cool, it's too bright. Let's bring down the exposure a bit and adjust the light more to the front. Cool, let's group these, duplicate it and find different ways to present them. I'll just fast forward this because it's not that important. I used the dynamic place tool to align it with the floor and everything and then just adjusted it with the move tool. But yeah, nothing fancy here. But god damn, this is so satisfying to look at, huh? Maybe it's just me. Anyway, I spent another five minutes to add some soft body simulations since now with the new cinema, you can actually do it with models that are not just a simple sphere. I'll just quickly fast forward since this video is not really about this, but I left it at regular speed for my patrons and members cause you know, perks. That's it, I'm wrapping up my color management tutorial so expect that next. I'm hitting some delays but it'll be worth it. Check out the packs on my Gumroad, consider supporting on Patreon if you can, and a muscly handshake to all my beefy patrons and members, Yin and Gong, Guillaume Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Voice Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, Hotter, Leo, Miskic 2S, Petter Odiger, Hyun Ji Shin, Chris Hyde, Aldo Boyd, Farong Farong, Katie Royal, Derek Fredrickson, Biko Sun, Lee Win Ji Wen, Leza Korzyski, ZTH, Seth Richardson, Ruby Nain, Lucas Ranche, Tell Me More, Jaskirat Pandreth, 3D Monkey Biz, Arlen, Suki Violet 2, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desile, Derek Schultz, Maurice Hickendorf, Studi Image, Matus Jajajajuski, Blue Hamel, Mark Reagan, Joshua Akoi, Punksacornum Siri, Webb, Kong Idiot, Maddie DeGrell Ray, Choi Yun Jun, NZE, IEMN, Golfino666, Ali Asser, Leandro Marimon, May, Baugasm, Shane, Perry Cooper, Hannah Kazeka, Oscar Dykeman, Oisin O'Brien, Joel Taylor, Amanda Georgia, and everybody else on the list. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.